Hello everybody, this is Travis Blaze at sketch to animate It is another Wednesday and this time we're going to be calling this my lunch break live stream. Since I have a full-time gig, I have to manage myself here. And I've got a big surprise. Say hello, everybody. Anita. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I've got Anita on the phone here. Um, she's right here in my phone. I like to keep her there at times. Is it comfortable in that phone? I should get a bigger phone for you. Maybe yes, I should, please. Maybe I should switch you to the iPad. That'll be better. Anywho, uh, we are here live, and I'm just seeing if anyone's in the chat room yet. I don't see anybody, but that's okay. I'm just gonna try to find a nice, cozy spot. Maybe, you know what I'll do is I'll take, uh, we got Marhashi. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a quick test real quick. I'm gonna pull this lavier mic off and put it closer to, um, you and see if it still picks Hi, up. Hi, guys. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Life Fantasy X. Hi, I'm Akashi and Lou Crescio. Can everybody hear me pretty good as well? Um, I put the mic down on the desk and I want to make sure that um, we can actually hear me. If not, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and put it back on. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody can hear me still just, just fine without any any issues. Um, actually, you know what? I might just put it back on because I feel nervous that I'm not going to have anything going here. All right. So without further ado, um, it has been uh, a week and two days since I've started my new gig and uh, just trying to get back into the, the swing of things, trying to keep track of my hours, time management. It's a key issue, especially when you're a full-time employee and you're also running your own business uh, with sketch to animate we just recently if you guys didn't know we just recently did our first twitch exclusive live stream this past Monday evening um, depending on my schedule and my workload I may end up switching my hours uh, for this time slot depending on how things go um, but since I'm able to do it during my lunch break it shouldn't be too much of an issue um, so we're going to keep this, this live stream to about an hour to an hour and a half tops. Um, and so we've got Anita. Yes? Uh, there's a buzzing noise. I the, don't know what that is. Oh, I know what the buzzing, like... I know what the buzzing noise is. It's power. Hold on. I'm going to unplug. Do you hear it now? Uh, just give me a sec. I think it's, I think it might be gone now. Is it gone? Let me know, guys. Okay, yeah, now it's gone. Yeah, you yeah, know what it is? Is because I had the Rode mic uh, that's plugged into the camera charging, so it's it's getting the electrical buzzing noise feedback. That's what it was. So there you go. I just okay. unplugged it and got rid of it. All right, so here we go. We got Marhashi Kitchen Cat. Oh, got we got. Let's see. Okay, it's gone. Awesome. Uh, Jonathan Blaze, the onion is live. Yes, the onion. Well, this is a growing onion again. This one, this one is sort of getting there. If you guys don't know this, Jonathan, Jonathan Blaze happens to have my same last name, which is really weird. Probably because that's my son. My son is live. And eventually, you know, I've been talking about getting my son onto this program with me at some point once we get really going and having him come on because Jonathan is also an artist as well, which is pretty awesome. We got a whole family of artists. Uh, we've got Anita. Actually, Chocho's an artist. Um, actually, your, your whole side of the family is pretty talented too, Anita, from, what I, from when I was teaching... Uh, we've got Asha, who's an artist, uh, a painter, who's your your cousin. Uh, both the boys draw pretty well, although Jacob doesn't think he can draw that well. He does. Uh, and so we've got a whole slew of just surrounded by lots and lots of wonderful talent. So today, let's see here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about character designing further with ARC. And also we're going to be talking about story and how we can really kind of help push the story more. And now I'm going to, you know what I did? I put all of my stuff on my scripts. 
here. So I kind of want to get that out of the way. All right. Okay. So, oh, Life Fantasy has a question. So question for Travis. Have you been, have, have you been to any test screenings when you were at Disney? Uh, yes. Test screenings were a normal thing that we would do. Um, in particular, they would, uh, especially when they had something that was in animatic phase and going into animation, uh, they always released uh, that to the crew, so they wanted to get feedback and notes from us. It was really important during that process that everybody that was part of the Disney team uh, was able to kind of go through and give their notes and, and feedback. Because essentially, you know, it, it, it did two things. It, it kind of, it got us, you know, since each production has about 260 some odd people uh, plus in during that production, it's really nice to get a nice gauge uh, over a spectrum, whether they were an artist or, or, or an in administration or whatever part they, they were in, it was nice to get some feedback from an outside perspective so that they could then also, it helped um, kind of give everyone a little bit more camaraderie, like feel like they had ownership in what they were doing by allowing people to kind of see this and give feedback. But um, it also helped them look gauge notes and see what was hitting the mark and what wasn't. And if things were consistently hitting or if they were getting consistent notes, uh, then they realized those are were, those were definitely big uh, flags to kind of address and, and kind of look at their story and make decisions based on that. So, um, so yes, it was a very common practice. It still is a common practice. Uh, as a matter of fact, even with the Warner Brothers feature that I was on, uh, you know, I, I was a part of the story team as well as the art department uh, for character designing. So I got to see the screening uh, under several iterations and got to give feedback and notes. Um, and then they would obviously show it to the executives and the executives would give notes as well. So, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a call from somebody and I don't know who that is. Uh, I'm going to not accept this because it doesn't show up as anyone. Decline. Hello, I'm back. Someone was trying to call in, but it had no number. So I had no idea who that was. Um, anyways. I'm glad you didn't drop me the presses. Well, yeah. Uh, oh, we got a new person in the house. Hey, Travis. If the industry continues productions from home, how do you think that will change the cost payment structure of it all? That is a really, really good question. Um, as a matter of fact, there is a really, uh, and I've been talking, I think I've been talking about this, Anita, since January, that me being uh, remote has really um, allowed me to have a lot of freedom to kind of pick and choose the projects that I want to work on and also um, being able to be in a place that I feel comfortable with, um, you know, not just affording a home, but in, a, in an area that I really enjoy. And I've always said this, you know, there's so much talent out there from, from what I see with you guys. Everyone that's part of this chat, that's part of uh, Sketch to Animate, that's part of Aaron's uh, group, that's part of Proco and all these others. There's a global community of artists and animators that are just biting at the chomps to kind of get their foot in the door to any kind of production related to entertainment when it comes to animation. And I think, and I've been saying this since I've been, doing this remotely, I think now for four years, um, I feel like this has been a growing trend to allow more of this, but uh, of, of more people working remotely. But now they just did, a, they literally, you know it's, it's finally hitting when the BBC on NPR does a report and talking about even though the entertainment industry, the live action industry has kind of shut down, the one industry that's still thriving is the animation industry because we it doesn't re really require us to be in a working studio. All it requires is the, the studios to kind of rethink on how they build out their infrastructure and keeping their, uh, their, their, um, their styles and their, their proprietary uh, projects uh, not just safe, but also um, it is allowing people that wouldn't normally have had an opportunity to work for a studio to now be able to submit and really, and not have to move. And we're seeing that this is becoming a growing trend. I think, and I, my prediction is that after a while, um, and it's not gonna happen with every studio, but I think after a while, 
they're, they're going to be more and more open to the idea that we can all work from home. Um, I still like the idea of having a team, that a core team where you can eventually come back in and work together. But when it comes to the, the, out, the production end, um, the idea of working from home, and I'm doing it now, I'm working with Netflix, and Netflix is on the bandwagon. They're on the forefront of this right now. Their infrastructure and what they're doing uh, is so on point and and it's been flawless for me I haven't had any hiccups transitioning into this new role uh, their IT department is online everyone is online it's a great staff a great group of people and I feel like that that type of trend is going to transcend through all of the other studios uh, I mean it has already but it might it might into some degree stay there so I think in terms of pay um, that really comes down to, your work experience. I haven't seen a change in the pay structure uh, in terms of what our value is. Um, if you are in, let's say, uh, California, you fall under, um, if you're a union, uh, you fall under the union uh, category, then they have, they protect you in terms of your rights uh, with minimum wage and what you can get. But when it comes to people like myself, um, you know, I have to negotiate every single time what that going rate is. The difference with me is because I've done it for so many years and because I have a good reputation, um, I, can, I can negotiate uh, my rates in a way that allows me to get what, what I feel is fair. Um, and my rates fluctuate depending on project to project. Some projects may not have a bigger, as big of a budget as the other ones, but if it stays within a range that I'm comfortable with, and if I really like the people and the project, I'll take the project because I really like working with them. And, uh, and so there, there's that kind of thing that I think um, it's really going to be up to you in terms of what they offer uh, in terms of rates and pays. And every place is going to be different uh, wherever you're at. Now, uh, hopefully that answers that question. Um, let's see. Kind of have to like advocate for yourself. You're always gonna have to. I think you're always gonna have to advocate for yourself. You're you're gonna be need. You need to have real ex, uh, realistic expectations in terms of what your value is, and then you also really know to. Uh, you really need to gauge what um, the going rate is. Now, if you look at um, the United States, if you go to and if you go online, the IATSE union has their 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 wages. Uh, they do every year. They do a survey to, uh, from across the board and ask people. Now, not everyone does the survey, but they ask artists that are already in the industry what they get, and so they can have a fair range of pricing uh, to have their wages online to show what the fair wage union scale should be, and it changes every year. Now, the minimum of the, the union, from what I've noticed, is pretty low, but it's still better than most places. So if you're in a journeyman rate like where, where I'm at, um, I'm above that journeyman scale uh, that's typically in that thing just because I've been doing it for 30 years and I, I negotiate for, for my talent and I advocate for myself. Now... Um, and you know, I, I always say, you know, I always say to every production that I ever ever go to, I said, look, you know, let me prove to you the value of who I am. You know, it's not just paying me what I feel is fair for me, but it's also I got to prove to you, and I want to show you that what you get, you're going to get your money's worth when you work for somebody like myself. And I I really believe in in hard work and good work ethics. Uh, that's which is why I'm trying to have a lunchroom chat and not uh, overstep my time when it comes to my new position because I want to you know I'm just starting this job and I want to make sure that I'm I, I'm in I'm in good standing with them. So uh, let's see here. We got Kirk Michael in the house. We got Brush Mechanic says yeah. My buddy in California just negotiated his contract for a six month gig. I'm building a new machine to have the power needed to. Use Substance and Maya with VR. The hardware is nuts. Yeah, oh, I can imagine. I can absolutely imagine. I'm going to switch over now to uh, the Cintiq real quick here so we can get going here. Uh, I did this little quick. I did this literally. This was a 10-minute a sketch that I did before posting because I always I feel pressured that I, my, I have to do at least one sketch before I make an announcement on Facebook. 
um, it was always drilled in my head from Aaron. It's like, you have to do a sketch a day. You have to do a sketch a day. And when you're working multiple jobs and you're doing a lot of different things and you have very little, uh, no offense to Anita, who is very busy with school and also working on the back end of the website, as far as the front end doing all of this stuff, I'm kind of on my own. So there's a lot of work that goes involved. So having to have the added pressure of drawing uh, is, is kind of... Eh, intimidating. But um, I drew this because uh, I wanted to kind of talk about story more and talk about arc and uh, how we can kind of elevate the story within what I've done already, which is I did the beat boards, which you guys saw, or, or so most of you have seen those beat boards. And um, now I'm kind of going back into ex exploration of the character and the story of it to kind of make sure that I'm really pushing this the best that it can be. I feel like this, the beat boards that I did was a great first start in uh, the visual development of this show as a whole, uh, since I'm the only artist doing this uh, because we have no budget and we have no, uh, we don't really have anyone else that can come on board to help us. Uh, this is sort of a one man show at this point uh, with the suggestions, of course, from my my creative partner uh, Shane, who will you know pipe in from time to time and let it, let me know. Especially like what the last live session we had, I completely forgot that I was supposed to give Gallus baggier clothes. So once I I re realized that, I was like, oh, that changes his whole character. It makes his character stronger and funnier because every outfit that he wears is going to be oversized because it was meant for a human being. So, um, how are we doing okay on the chats over here? Any questions for me so far? So, yeah, you got a question from Jackson Cliff. Okay. Uh, it's a very specific question. Very specific. Uh, he asked, very specific. He asks, um, if someone hires me as a freelancer and tells me to animate an episode based on the animatic and the character sheets, but for some reason he or she doesn't respond to any email for months, Am I allowed to use what I did for them so far in my demo reel? Uh, okay. There, there's a, there's a one big red flag. Why is this person not responding to you? And is this a legitimate gig? Because if it was a legitimate gig, um, communication is key, especially with animation. And so, uh, for instance, Netflix, you know, um, I can't talk about the project that I'm working on, um, but I can tell you that communication is the key with them. And from the get go, right from the start, um, every time I sent an email, I got a response within 10 minutes. Um, every time I had an issue, they have a Slack disk, you know, a Slack going for technical issues. Um, they, and, and I'm, and I, you know, they sent me a computer to work on separately from my own home computer which is great, um, but you know, I had to put it all together myself, and for the most part I could do it, but there was a lot of technical things to keep it, you know, keep it secure and keep everything, because it is um, a remote access to uh, their infrastructure, so we had to do it properly. I had an issue, boom, five minutes, within five minutes actually, IT was on top of it. Fantastic. I can't say any, anything but wonderful things about Netflix so far. So um, I would say I would be worried that the person that gave you the freelance gig is not responding to you. That's, that's a troublesome thing, and, I'd be, and I would be hesitant to work on the project until I got a response. Secondly, um, you should get at least some kind of timing sheets. Um, uh, Lavoie said, agreed with self-advocating. You must, um, can you read that thing that... Uh, Le, Le, Le Hoy said, which is actually Joe Scott. Um, Joe Scott. Okay. Uh, which is, it's, Le, it's La Hoy on Facebook. De, okay. De Vere. Can you read that off to him? Yes. I shall. Um, agreed with self-advocating. You must. And your body of work represents and supports your self-promotion when attaining work. If the studio needs to see how you might apply that talent and expertise to their specific project, they should trust your experience and the, your body of work and give you a paid trial run, not an effing test. Now, this is a gentleman that has 30 
25 plus years, 30 years plus experience in industry. He knows what he's talking about. This is one of my good friends and he's very, very smart. He's been a director for many, many years in TV and advocating for yourself is one of the hardest things as an artist because some of us aren't big advocates. We are not, we're, we're, we're fragile at times. We're introverts. You know, I'm speaking we're as, as a community. You know, there's a mix of us. We're very diverse. We come from different ethnic backgrounds. We come from cultural differences. We come from a lot of different places. And so we need to kind of band together as a community to support one another. And one of those things is being able to advocate for yourself is so important in this industry. And I, I think we're, I am, I, you know, I'm happy to see that we're seeing a lot of positive changes starting to occur. And I want to see that trend continue um, to, to happen in this industry so that everyone gets a fair, a fair wage, a, a, a voice, you know, because all we want is to be heard in this industry. You know, the moment that they, they give you a platform to be heard, that's sometimes that's all that someone ever needs. So, um, uh, Gobo says, I had no idea that you get a remote computer to work remotely on project. Is it because the softwares are locked on the computer? Um, it, that depends on who it is. Um, for, for us, I totally understand with, with Netflix, you know, their infrastructure, they want to, you know, we have to keep things very secure. Like me, I signed an NDA. I can't, I can't talk about the different things that they're working on, but I can tell you, you know, nothing, nothing but great things. And if you want to try to work for them, um, I totally say submit. They're looking for story artists right now. They're looking for all kinds of people and they're looking for people globally. They're looking for writers for feature films. Um, you know, they, they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of projects happening and a lot of great people on, in, over there working. So, um, if you want to, to give your, your, throw your hat in the ring, uh, for over there, I'd, I'd say just go ahead and do it. Um, there's lots of uh, artist recruiters out there looking uh, for artists right now. Um, so by all means, uh, give it a shot. But yes, they do, they do give us computers because they have to keep, um, a, it, it makes it legitimate. Uh, it, it's, it's, they're smart by doing that, I think, because I said they didn't need to because I'm very conscious about budget. You know, I like to keep things as tight budget as you can. But on the flip side, I understand because of the multiple projects that they have, they have to keep things secure. And this is, this is one way that they do it, which is great. Um, and I'm, and I'm totally for it. You know, I take care of everything that I have. So, um, you know, it's, it's very meticulous on how I do things at my, my room. I might be a little unorganized at times, but when it comes to the computers, I try to be as efficient as efficient as possible. Um, uh, hopefully Anita, I haven't done much, drawing but I hopefully I got to the one person that asked the question uh where I'm looking back uh oh uh where is that where's that one question that talked about the freelance oh okay oh, yeah, I, you def I think you you answered that question yeah the, my the thing is but it bothered me because they said I have a question if someone hires me as a freelance as freelance and tells me to animate an episode based on their animatic character sheets but for some reason, he or she doesn't respond any emails for months. My, my thing is, don't do the project. Don't work on it. Even if you're biting at the chomp for work, you're not getting any work if you can't get communication. And already that's a clear sign to me, again, that the, they, they either don't know how to run a production properly or there's something clearly missing in there. Don't do any work for free and don't... don't don't work for someone that doesn't respond to you for months, especially when they're relying on you for animation. Uh, that, that just doesn't fly with me. I, I would never work for a person or, or an entity like that if they didn't communicate. So finish that up. <laughs> That's that. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about story again. So I, I did this, again, like I said, I did this, this sketch and this was mainly me thinking about uh, how Sue's personality is one of which she wants, she's friends with everyone. She's a very, she's, she's the glass half full kind of character. She's very optimistic. Um, and then Gallus is more of the, you know, he, he tries to play by the rule books if he can. They're all super goofy, 
All right. So don't don't get me wrong. This show is a very ridiculous show. It, you know, it's meant to be fun and funny, but we're going to have elements of seriousness in there, undertones in there that we're going to mix like conspiracy theories to folklore to to, you know, um, cloning animals, which which these characters are. They're they're cloned and frozen animals on a spaceship being sent off the space, which is technically um a, a reality you know it's something that exists in our world so I kind of wanted to play off those ideas and and kind of put us if you will um, 30 years 40 years from now when we're sending people off to Mars uh, you know what's the future going to be like after that and then uh, kind of taken a more ridiculous spin especially with uh, three animals that are are the self-proclaimed captains of the ship uh, what do we have for questions? Anything? Uh, so, Hogarth um, Morrison uh -huh. asks, could you tell about the... Oh, hold on, I have to make sense of this question. Okay. Uh, oh, basically it's asking, what's the story behind your octopus logo? Oh, the story behind the octopus logo. Well, if you go to... <laughs> Should I, do I need to do this? I need to do this. Hold on, hold on a yes. second. Uh, do it, Travis. I, all right, I will do this. Uh, it's gonna be a little. Uh, uh, let's see here. Transition. Oh, I got. Gosh darn it! I always have to click it on OBS. Transition. All right, I'm a little washed out here, but if you go to this website down below, sketchtoanimate.com, and click on our story it will tell you the story behind our logo. And essentially, I wanted to write a cute little story uh, regarding the logo about the octopus and what sketch to animate means and what we are trying to accomplish. And we are a story-driven brand, and we try to tell stories through original concepts by educating, entertaining, and inspiring people to tell their story. And so... Um, Everyone knows that, that when I teach story development, I always start with sketching and then developing through the Ken Adams story spine, which I developed, um, adapted, and created the anatomical story diagram, which is in that section of called Our Story on Sketch to Animate. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can download that image, and it will give you the structure of how we approach story. And it also explains to you uh, when a cute fictional story of the birth of, of our octopus and what it means to sketch to animate. So there you go. And also you can check out our, our Patreon page as, as well as our YouTube. Uh, we have a lot of YouTube followers right now uh, that is, that's over here on, uh, with us today. And we have some Twitch brush mechanic. Uh, we have a lot of, a few people from Twitch, which is great. Um, asking questions uh, today, which is awesome. We're trying to get more and more Twitch people over there because we have this big thing. And Anita, I don't know if we're if we've decided. You, you can maybe spearhead this this one for me. Um, draw over Mondays on Twitch is about doing draw overs for people. Uh, people submit their work. Um, a handful of people submit their work and then we will do draw overs. I will do draw overs for them. On top of that, at some point in that Twitch live stream, I am also giving away an original art. So I am, I, I will literally draw a sketch. Uh, I'll get a prompt or either I have an idea and I'll just draw it live. I'll do it digitally. I'll do it in Photoshop and then I'll print it on my printer and then I'll sign it one of one. And then I'll delete that digital image so it doesn't exist anymore. So the only thing that's in existence is that actual print that I do off my printer. And then I mail it to you. So one person per live session will get an, an original piece of art that I do on the fly right then and there. And it will be signed by me and then sent off. And I just sent two of them out because I sent one to my partner, Wink, who uh, really liked the first initial one that I did. And so I said, okay, I'll send you one. And then I sent one uh, to the, the first person that uh, got the drawing, and it was a dragon. I drew this uh, fairy dragon that was, I, I got stumped on how to draw. Uh, he was spitting out cotton candy, 
and I, and I couldn't figure out how to draw cotton candy in black and white. It was really challenging. Was that a prompt? That, well, that, that was, well, so, idea. no, no, no. Someone said, hey, let's do a fat dragon, a, a cute fat fairy dragon. And, and somebody said, hey, can you, can, instead of flames, can they spit out cotton candy? And I'm like, oh, sure. And for 20 minutes, I felt like I couldn't draw cotton candy. So it, it still, to me, looks like those puffs of smoke coming out of his mouth. But I was trying desperately to, to do cotton candy. Say, so, there you go. All right, back to that. So, story. Yeah. Do, you, do you want me to, to speak more on, yeah. on the Twitch? Yeah, 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 let's yeah. speak more on the Twitch. Okay, if, any, so, if anybody wants well, to know, if, I, does, does everyone... Well, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, can, can we hear you? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm going to hold you up here, and I'm going to draw while I do this. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, um, so as as Travis has so succinctly explained, we've got a new show on Twitch, and we really encourage you guys to head over on that side. Um, when we have this show, it's it's just for this exclusive stream. We do intend to keep our communities alive here on YouTube, and you know, continue doing the the streams here. But the reason we want to move. Uh, to Twitch is because it's such a unique and accommodating platform for people who are trying to, you know, uh, you know, promote themselves or to do business uh, with live streams. Because right now, uh, our content is majoritively live streams. And we do that because it's the most convenient way for Travis to work while also, you know, Paying the bills and keeping his, uh, keeping his, oh, what happened to your YouTube? Oh, no, that's just me. My bad. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a convenient way for us to do business right now. But we have such big dreams, and we really want to, you know, we want to put out more back-to-basic videos. We want to put out uh, tutorials. We want to put out, you know, workshops for people and um, it's a bit of a struggle to to get the funds to do that with a team of me, Travis, and now um, Wink, uh, who helps host the Twitch live streams. You know, so Twitch is a really good platform to help you know build an audience and give a good like you know gateway to support the people that you that you want to support. So you guys, if you wanted to support us, uh, Twitch has a really good way of doing that. And yeah, so we, we put out this product called Drobo Mondays. And it is very, it is very helpful. I'm a I'm a student, I'm a animation story artist student. And I can tell you guys, like, when Travis uh, drew over some of my own boards, like, it's it's so helpful as a visual artist to get given help that's visual, you know? Like, people can say stuff to you, but if you can see it and someone's drawn over it, it, it makes one hell of a difference. It's like instantly your art just becomes better and you can see exactly how to make it better. So that's, that's, the, that's the idea of these drawovers. Uh, Travis does it all the time uh, with his students over at DigiPen, and I watched him do many, many, many drawovers with his students, and they all really enjoyed it, so we thought this will be the product that will help us build a community over on Twitch. So, yeah, we are going to start opening up um, submissions to people, and you guys will be able to, you know, uh, send over your your art for the for draw drawovers from Travis. Uh, we just started this week and it sounds like it went really well it's not within like my awake time so i wasn't able to watch it but uh travis tells me that it went very well yes it, it actually well <laughs> i'm gauging it off because i am i am an old fuddy-duddy that still like is this working i can't tell if this is is resonating with people if it makes sense um you know, we're, we're, it's, it's such a unique platform, like you said, that trying to get into that, um, because there's a lot of benefits to having your own 
basically channel that is like an NBC, ABC, kind of like we're having our own own sketch animate channel. And um, you can also stream at a higher quality on Twitch as well. And having that as a platform where we can really engage with people and have them do drawovers, I think is a really fun and exciting way to kind of really kind of get to know the artist better and, and really get the, uh, and really get the most out of what we're trying to accomplish with sketch to animate. Um, you know, again, with sketch to animate, we're also trying to build our own original productions and projects. And, um, but we're also here to really let people know that, you know, that there is, you know, everyone has a voice in, in animation. Everyone has a voice when it comes to story. And I think stories, animation is a great platform to tell a story. And, um, and I think we need more and more artists like myself and others that are, have been in this industry to kind of give back a little bit, to kind of help others to kind of get to that place where they can tell their own story. And even if it isn't, you know, working for a studio um, and you're just doing it for your own self or your family or you want to get something down that you felt like it was really important to share, uh, you know, the same concepts that we do um, for storyboarding are the same concepts you can apply to comic books or children's books. You know, um, I'm not just doing, I, you know, it, animation is the platform, but um, these drawovers are really helpful when it comes to illustrations. Because that's why we've said, if you have an illustration, if you have um, an, a character design, a storyboard, um, or an animated scene you want feedback on, um, we're setting up a platform to allow you guys to, to send it to us. And, you know, we may not get to everybody during that particular uh, live stream, um, but our goal is to try to hit everyone that we can possibly hit um, to kind of help them along the way. And so far, I don't know if um, if you've talked to, I, we still have to get that, that video out to Mandy, because um, I don't know if that video is being saved on Twitch or not, the live stream that we had. Um, I, have, okay. I have no idea, but I have the actual footage recorded that we can probably post on YouTube. Um, and then um, and get that up on YouTube so people can see that the the, the stream from uh, Twitch we can get it up on YouTube for everyone to see it. Um, not everyone's gonna be able to unless you're. So my encouragement to you guys is if you want that kind of drawover process, if you want me to to watch me draw over people's work and have a discussion about that, um, get more hands on, sign up for Twitch, um, and and uh, try to. Uh, join us next Monday because we're going to be doing this. Uh, if it all goes well, we're just going to continue doing this every Monday. Uh, you can see now what I'm trying to do here, guys, is um, this is where uh, Bo and, and Sue are going to unfreeze the baboons for the first time, the, the two baboons that they, they want to unfreeze. So I'm trying to come up with funnier um, visuals when they were frozen because a lot of these, some of the animals were either cryogenically frozen um, or they were um, clones that were frozen to be shipped off into space. And then there will be other things in there where they'll find embry embryos that may not have names on them. Maybe the names get mixed up and then they unfreeze or grow them and, and all of a sudden, you know, they accidentally and inadvertently grow one of them and it's a dinosaur. You know, um, I was thinking about things like that, like if there was a dino wing uh, for one of their episodes, maybe they accidentally let one grow and it becomes a Tyrannosaurus rex. And, and, they, and it runs amok in the wing. You know, it's that type of humor and that type of adventure that we're trying to kind of put in there um, while playing off of real science ideas or concepts that we can just kind of poke fun at and have fun with. Um, so what, what else do we have here from people? Um, do you guys like the idea? Um, let me know. Actually, it'd be great if you can just say, um, yes, I can join you, um, or no, I can join you. Uh, it's going to be Pacific, uh, it'll be Mondays, 6 p.m. to 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. So wherever you are in your country, that's going to be the time that's set. And I have to do it during that time because I work for, for a studio now that um, takes up the majority of my time during the day. So hopefully that makes sense for everyone. Um, do we have any uh, other? So Go ahead. Just reading some comments and 
you have a hello, Travis. How are you doing from Chen's Art? Oh, hey, Chen's Art. Nice to see you. And we've got, got my coffee. Uh, two people saying that they'll they'll be there on Monday. Brush Mechanic and MB Bellin, who I think is Mary Beth. Yes, it's Mary Beth. She she switched over to Twitch. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I know it's late for some people on the East Coast, but it, it really is the best scenario for me at this point. And uh, I think it works out well for others that are in different countries. Um, but it's not too, too bad when you think about it. It's 9 o'clock to midnight. It really goes to on a Monday night. Yes, it's a Monday night. <laughs> so, But, um, you know, it is what it is. But I, I really think that if you, um, that it's going to, it'll be It'll be a great experience. It's a great experience for me because I I learn more when I draw over other people's work, and I and I and I ask the questions. The poignant questions are, "What is your intent?" I always ask that from the beginning. What is because I don't want to change your story or your animated scene or your character design. I want to know where you are basing your concepts from and what your intention is. And then my goal is to try to get you to that goal, that that intention as close to it as possible. If it's not hitting the mark, we're going to try to get you there without changing it and making it a Travis Blaze work of art. It, I want it to be a Mary Beth or a Chen's art, uh, you know, I, I, or Life Fantasy X. I don't want it to be mine. I want it to be yours. Um, and drawovers, again, I think I've told you guys this before. I learned by doing drawovers um, in animation. That's, that's how I learned to be a better animator. That's how I learned to be a better character designer um, is by, by drawing, having people draw over my, my work. Now what I'm doing here right now is I'm I'm going in and I'm again trying to put it on some weird a surprise kind of look for um, one of the the baboons. This is uh, Derek, not Darok. This would be the Derek character. Um, where I'm, you know, it's 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 trying to find. I want to bring the humor in this, so um, this was more like a shocked look. And uh, it would be funny if the, 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 the characters were kind of giving commentary about what they must have been thinking, you know, before they got frozen. Um, and this one's uh, clearly holding a banana, um, which is what I have on this one. And so I'm trying to build a story. And what I'm doing is I'm taking existing boards that I've had from before my, from my beat boards and I'm going in, I'm trying to uh, figure out how I can build the story out funnier and also figure out what the mechanic is with this machine that he's in. I like the ideas of, of them being in this sort of tube-like uh, scenario. So if, uh, if we were in a room, uh, there would be conveyor belts uh, with tubes attached, and basically the characters would be on these conveyor belts one by one. And then you would, would basically pick them out. It's almost like uh, I was taking Is this. Is it like um, Masters University, like with the doors? Uh, well, yeah, kind of like with the doors, but also like I was thinking of, um, yeah, that's actually a good point, like the, the Monsters University, but I was th more... I, it prompted me because I was thinking about the conveyor belts at the sushi joints that we go to. You know the. the oh, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I mean, it, it would be funny if it, you know. In this case, um, you know, it would it would drop down, right? It would, sh and all the tubes and everything would be attached to it, um, and it would drop down, and then it would unfreeze. Yeah. So whatever character was up high, would then you know, be dropped down into a floor that was down here, like so. Um, let me put, so you can see that better. So in this case, this would be like a series of baboons or monkeys and that like this could be one one area like this could literally be like the baboon section, and then you might have the gorilla section. Uh, where there's so many, 
the great the, the thing is that I what I like about this show is there's so many ideas and concepts that you can kind of play off of that I feel like it it lends itself to an endless amount of ideas that you can you can have fun with um, and and it also has an opportunity to bring other writers in to kind of um, do some funny bits because I, I wanted to set I wanted to create a template for a show that allows for a lot of diversity in comedy and funny gags and jokes that we can kind of incorporate into into the show itself um, it's, I feel like it's very malleable in terms of what you can do with it um, based on the template that we've created for the characters. Can I read out uh, yeah. some more comments? Yeah, go ahead. So Gobo C says, uh, in, in regards to Monday, they say, ooh, I can def definitely make it then. I was thinking about sending you my character designs and character animation exercises. I've been needing feedback on the, on those. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so the the we've been kind of debating, and I don't know if that's if we wanted to um, create this as a Patreon or for creating this as a uh, a page that we would create on fa on our website to uh, be able to have people submit their work to. Uh, have we made a decision on any of those things? I mean, those those would be legitimate questions, I think, to ask, right? Yeah, um, I think so far, but like, don't don't hold me to this. We were thinking of um, doing doing a Patreon, but also allowing people who you know don't want to subscribe to a Patreon route uh, to have a segment in the show where you know they could. I think Wink will open it up and say, like, hey, uh, so this last segment of the show, we're going to open it up for people to send in stuff. So if, so then if you were watching during that segment and you wanted to send in stuff, you could you could do it, and then Wink would just organize it all so that you, you were able to receive it, Travis. But Got we, we want to make avenues or options for people. You know, like, we, we won't say that... Um, you have to subscribe to this monthly thing to be able to get your draw overs. Um, if if we can, like you know, diversify that more, uh, we will we will try. We just need to plan out that infrastructure. Okay, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And of or of course, if you were, you were asking why I'm asking questions to uh, Anita, is because. Um, they're trying to help me <laughs> not worry about these things, then I can just focus on what's important, which is getting, getting uh, you know, time with you guys to do drawovers um, and other things like that so that we, I am um, using my time efficiently uh, and in the creative sense because essentially that's why you know, we're all here, right? We're here to have me help in any way I can and it was, again, it was, it was, I love the drawover process, um, but we also need to figure out a way to uh, make an income from this and uh, be able to make it um, lucrative and uh, beneficial uh, for everybody. Yes? Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely. That is, well, you that see, is Travis, the, you're the top. You're not, you're not the brains of the operation. I, you're I, just the talent. I am not the brains, guys, just the talent. I'm just I'm just the uh, the hand that guides the brain, or the brain guides the hand. Yes, that. Yes, we we just put you in your chair and we say draw. Draw. And that's all you need to do. That's all I need to do, guys. I'm just drawing. I'm just an artist trying to draw, and do the best that I can. That's it. That's me. That's all I am. Not much underneath. I'm very very yeah. <laughs> very shallow. Other we, than that. We we will definitely communicate with you guys um, more about it. Uh, we we work a little bit slow because we're trying to, um, you know, communicate between three people in completely different time zones. But we we you know are moving in the right directions, and uh, yeah, we we will let you know how to how to do it or what what infrastructure we choose to allow you guys to send in your stuff. But uh, allow it, if you guys can watch us on the Mondays, it will really help get our average viewer 
average viewership is that what we're lacking because we're trying to get from like your basic we're uh, trying to get Twitch to a partner person to your, yeah yeah we're trying to get to partner we're trying to get to the the level above because it allows us a little bit more functionality so um if you guys uh, are able to watch on the mondays that will help us a lot and um yeah we will communicate as soon as we know how you can how you can submit your stuff and we'll make sure that there is a diverse range so that you don't have to commit to something you don't want to commit to yes that that's very well said um, with that being said, do we have any more uh, questions? You know, as like I said, as what I'm doing right here is I'm taking uh, a design of Derek the baboon who's frozen and I'm trying to come up with uh, a kind of a funnier bit or fo pose for him. And what's this do? What is what this is doing for me is getting me to um, uh, get to know the character a little bit more, um, trying to push his expression and his design. And I'm trying to build a moment. Again, it's, this, is, this is more of a tied down beat board. Um, but I'm, tr I'm trying to focus on story um, and getting and making sure that I'm telling the right story with the idea that we're trying to get across according to the script. Um, and again, this is where Bo and Sue have uh, discovered this room full of gorillas and, or, sorry, baboons, primates. And uh, they are going through, uh, they found, they were looking through, like trying to find who they're going to, um, I guess, unveil or unfreeze. And by doing their research on the computer, they found old video footage of when man, man, uh, would experiment and send animals off into space, especially monkeys. And so they think, as, and it's sort of a spoof on the idea that we would experiment. Now, I'm not an advocate for experimenting on animals, but um, we do that um, Science does that, uh, whether we like it or not. And so we wanted to poke fun at that idea that it's absolutely ridiculous. And so these animals want to use them as an experiment to help them with their G-Force machine because they got to prepare for landing on a new planet. And so they thought, well, if we, pr we, we unfreeze these guys, these would be our perfect test dummies, if you will. Um, but it turns out to kind of strike against them when... Derek and Duroc show up and all they want to do is turn the engine room into a party house and uh, then they uncover all of then they unfreeze all of the baboons and now it's a free-for-all in the engine room and the engine room has now been destroyed and is on a, and has caused this ship to be on a collision course with a comet that um, they have to avoid so now um, this is again the first time you see Derek and Duroc and I'm wondering in my head as I'm drawing this, I'm thinking to myself, you know, with these guys, visuals mean everything. Like your layouts, your designs, your, your, your anything you do when it comes to animation uh, has to tell a story and your environments um, have to do the same thing. So um, this is again, the first time we're seeing Derek and um, you know, it, it could almost be a foreshadowing or foretelling, I was thinking like whatever he was in the act of doing might be a foreshadowing to what he ends up doing in the engine rooms. So I'm wondering even if we had him in like, you know, he's in a, you know, it could almost be like him in a dance move or doing something that kind of might resemble the fact that he's, he may not be the right candidate to unfreeze, but of course the characters uh, are, it's oblivious to the characters but it would be obvious to the audience. I don't know if you like that idea or not, um, Anita. But it's it's putting him in a pose of maybe he was frozen in midstream of doing something, and uh, then and then he was frozen and sent off into the ship. I like that idea. So I'm just trying to think what could that be for him? What could that one thing be like? What could he be? Like, it doesn't have to be this pose. I'm just drawing this pose and finishing out since I committed to it. But it doesn't have to be this final, uh, this final pose that I've got going here. It could be another pose. This is just an exploration uh, in character. Yes. Well, 
uh, Cook Michael, I, I know you're there. Give us some ideas. Actually, everyone, give us some ideas. Like Cook always has interesting uh, ideas. Well, I mean, you know, suggestions are always great. Um, but remember, you know, uh, we're, you know, I ultimately I will I will figure out what what this is. And the idea, the engagement of you guys giving us suggestions isn't that we take your ideas. It's more about getting you guys into the sense of understanding that when you develop your own story, uh, there's a process, there's a collaboration, a creative process that happens that it'd be good if you have people in your, in that you, you feel comfortable with sharing your ideas with to create a, a sort of a collaboration with them uh, to get honest feedback from people. Um, because ultimately, you know, this is a show that I want to see become an actual show. It's not just for everyone to kind of look and say, oh, those are pretty drawings you're doing. These, these are really cool ideas. Uh, no, I actually want to turn this into an actual pilot show that's going to be animated. So that's, that's the angle for me on this project. Uh, it... Can I read out some more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Read out some questions. All right. Uh, Filippo uh, Matti? Uh, yes. Uh, asks, asks, do you know how to animate in Toon Boom? I do not know how to animate in Toon Boom. That is one that is one software program I do not know how to animate in. Although I've used Storyboard Pro as a storyboard artist, and you can animate in that program just because um, it's... It's pretty simple to animate. I, I did, when I went to CTN, I did test it out in terms of what, uh, they, they sat me down, the Toon Boom, Toon Boom team sat me down and within like 40 minutes or 30, 20 minutes, I, I, I animated a, a squirrel run, which I posted on Instagram. Um, and it was fairly, fairly simple, straightforward to animate in. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the brushes personally, but um, there's definitely a lot you can do with it in terms of animation. And, um, you know, there's a lot of curve tools and, and smooth, you know, because it's, it's vector line, you can smooth out your lines and there's a lot of ways that you can help. Um, it does feel like it takes away a little bit of the, the kind of the textile feel of digital. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, bitmap based or pixel based where you're you're relying on the stroke of your hand or the or the, the 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 smoothness of what your stroke is with your drawing, um, but I find that when you're doing Toon Boom, you can it's it's a great way to kind of do the whole production pipeline where you want to go all the way to finish and you want it to be a nice clean line and you want it to be polished. Um, that it definitely has Toon Boom. I noticed when you see shows that are done in Toon Boom, they have a particular look to them. Um, I don't know if you noticed that too over a while. Um, a lot of shows like Mercury is a huge, is all, Mercury Studios is all like Toon Boom pipeline based. And they have, they have a big. They um, don't really do um, like traditional in Toon Boom. They usually do, uh, I think, I think that's just my perception. Um, they do puppet based a lot of the time, like with redraws, but it's all like a, there's well, a rig of the character. Well, you know, and, and there's a, there's a, the reason behind that um, in particular is because, you know, the budget and time. I mean, puppet animation, puppet style animation is sort of a streamline, getting you to animate faster, more consistently, and uh, varying artists that may have, uh, may not all have the same drawing style can then have an equal, uh, you know, if they're good animators. Um, they can, it seems like you can tend to animate and move symbols around, or not symbols, that's Flash, um, move these characters around, like in the puppets that have already been pre-rigged and pre-developed based on um, the character designs that they've done. And it feels like you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, good things that you can do with Toon Boom simply because of budget constraints and you want to still get a, a high quality animation um, it allows you to do that, which I, I find pretty, pretty cool. Um, but I'm a traditionalist. Um, you know, even if this show got picked up, I, who knows, I may consider different options for how the show gets ultimately done and produced, you know, whether it's done in a Toon Boom style or if it's done in 3D. Um, I'm open to all kinds of concepts. Originally, for me, I want this sh show to be a traditionally animated show. But of course, when you, you look at budget constraints, you got to think of, well, what's going to be the best thing for it? 
and ultimately if an, another studio picks it up, you know, they're going to make that decision on, on what they think is going to be the best option for it. Um, you know, if it's going to be done in, in a tomb boom style pipeline or not. So, um, but if I did it independently, um, I would seriously would have to look at tomb boom as an option, uh, and, or other software programs as different options to see what is going to be the best, um, economically speaking, uh, approach to, uh, developing this show. Because you, you gotta, you gotta really. There's a lot that goes into a show, not just the look and feel of it, but can you afford to to, to produce it? Is it affordable every episode to do this in day in and day out? Does does the popularity of the show warrant the quality that you're trying to achieve? Um, and where can you get? You know, it's all about budget and time, and then quality. Um. So I got, I got a. A nice little comment from Jasno. Okay. He says, uh, I'll, I'll pick up your show. What will this cost? 200 bucks? Oh, you know what, Jasno? Just lay down there before you hurt yourself. Um, I, I would, it, it might, if, if you add a couple of like zeros at the end of that, then we can talk. So if you're, if you're talking 200, then 1,000, great. Let's have a conversation because um, uh, life life fantasy X us uh, are Derek and the Rock wild and crazy party animals or more chill and laid back. Animals? Um, they're so Derek and the Rock are wild party animals, but they're but they've got that chill kind of bra uh, mentality. Um, all the other characters again. One of the the, the attributes, one of the, the characteristics about this that was based on the script is that we want the characters to everything that they touch they they destroy like you know inadvertently they grab something like oh this is cool and they just rip it off like oh wow awesome and they might bite on it chew on it and throw it away and it might be the the stick that drives the ship right um it's those kinds of things that's why the engine room kind of goes amok because these guys are trying to to heat up the room and make it more of a party room and so these guys are going to be again chill while the rest of the animals are a little bit wild and crazier. Um, so that's why I'm trying to come up with some kind of scenario that might be foreshadowing to what they're going to end up doing to the engine room, but they're frozen. You know, it could be, um, it, it, maybe it might be a thing where we're like, I don't think it's a good idea we should unfreeze this one. Oh, no, he looks uh, innocent enough. You know, we don't have that dialogue in there. But in my head, I'm thinking about, you know, what if we did? What if we did add that dialogue in there? It's like, oh, you know, should we, you know, which baboon do they unfreeze? Because there's a whole slew of them, and they might go through a whole slot of them. Because in the my, this is where story boarding can add to the script that we currently have, which is the script basically says they unfreeze these ships and Derek, these these two baboons and Derek and Durak arrive. But how we get to choosing those two. It can all happen in the storyboard phase. You know, we can start talking about uh, the different ways that we can get them to pick which characters they want to unfreeze, uh, and then they go, "Oh, these two look these two look harmless enough. These, these two look like the perfect test test dummies or something." And then we look at them, and they obviously have to be, you know, to the audience, they would have to be something. I think it would be have to be a humorous gag of some kind to put them in. That would be a pose that would be hilarious. Now, I don't think what I just drew here is the right pose, but it's a start. It's, you know, I'm looking at it right now going, you know, I, I, I can make this funnier. I can push this, this character's pose a little bit more. Um, you know, what, what, what would be the thing that he's, maybe he has uh, one hand on the glass kind of situation. Uh, and maybe he's he's frozen. What if he, he's frozen with his with his face against a glass? You know, like that. Like, like if he was if he was pushed. You know, against a glass. What would that look like? Right. So I'm just try, again trying to think of all these different funny little bits. And this is where, again, when I, when I said I wanted to talk about story and I wanted to talk about character, 
you know, I've again, I've I've looked through all of my my beat boards um, that I'm not sharing with you right now, but I've looked through all of those and I'm going, okay, these are these are points of interest that I really need to kind of lock down in my head mentally before I start boarding it out. So these are this is sort of my exploration uh, again into the character and the environment um, that they're in to, to kind of help push that story more. Um, what do you think, Anita? Oh. Uh, I can tell you what some people think. Okay. They think yes. I'm. They think uh, I should stop doing what I'm doing, retire, and go home. Oh wait, I'm already home. You could, you could use a, a near retirement, but I think no one could actually stop you from doing this. <laughs> from drawing. No one's gonna stop me. No. You can't stop me now. All right. So what are some of the other so, suggestions? Yes, so Ma Maharshi says that he really likes the expression um, on the face. He says, it's the same frozen expression I'd have when I see a huge tiger approaching me. Lol. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. Alice Jones also says, uh, would it help to add a few cracks in the glass to indicate a destructive nature? Uh, it might. That, I mean, that, that could be, you know, that's, you're, on, you're, on the right, you're on the right track there. Yeah, that could, be, that mm -hmm. could definitely be something um, that they could, they could have. Uh, what else? What else we got? And Life Fantasy X says, okay, one pose I thought of was one of them uh, faux surfing on broken equipment with a hang, hang loose hand. Say that one more time. I'm going to re reword it just so I, I <laughs> so that I can understand it too. I think Life Fantasy X is saying, so the expression would be like, they're surfing, they're, they're pretending to surf on broken equipment with a hang ten or hang loose uh, gesture to their hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, trying to think maybe they, they're smaller in this. Uh, what does, I, I just noticed Life Fantasy says Travis is too strong. What does that mean? What did you, what, what does he mean by that? Maybe maybe you're too strong to retire. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Brush mechanics says his tongue stuck to the banana would be funny to watch Thor. Ah, oh, you know what? That would be. That would be. Uh, that would be kind of funny. How? What would that look like? Um, I've had my tongue stuck to the inside of a fridge once. And what? It was not funny. <laughs> Wait, you stuck your, your okay, I got to hear the story. That cuz you know, that reminds me of anyone that's in the United States, the the the, the pop culture movie is Christmas story where he the kid gets double dog dared to put his tongue against the the pole in the middle of winter, uh, a, a a pole uh, in the uh, outside in, in the um, outside in the uh, schoolyard. And then he gets uh. stuck, and he ends up getting stuck. And then they bring the paramedics and the fire chief, and uh, the 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 chief the chief of police come out, and yeah, yeah. And it's it becomes a huge event, and everyone's like, oh my gosh. And they're like, oh man, I can't believe that's happening. And all because they dared this kid to to uh, <laughs> stick his tongue, which is kind of funny because we've all been there. But you actually did it. You actually I would, did it. I would like to say, yeah, I would like to say that someone did me, but it was just pure curiosity. Like, I I think I was just like, I had the freezer open, and there was something really nice about the cool air on my face, so I stuck my head in the freezer, and then I wondered, the, the ice in the back of the freezer looked really soft, so I wondered what it would feel like if I put my tongue... You know, you only learn certain lessons the hard way, like a stove is hot or you can't put metal in a microwave. And this is just a learning experience for me because at no point did I think my tongue would get stuck. So I put it in there and 
realize it hurts to try and pull it off. And I had to get, I think, my my nanny at the time. I asked her if she could just turn off the fridge. And so I had to wait a while so that the freezer would be warm enough for me to pull my tongue off. Uh, wow. You really waited for it to unfreeze? Yeah. To warm up? Because it was so... It was so stuck. My tongue was like going to rip <laughs> off if I, if I tried to. I'm not laughing with you. I am literally laughing at you. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. Okay. So there you, you have it, guys. We've learned something very funny and new. I That would be something I swear I would think because you guys, if you know Anita, Anita is very cautious about everything. She is not throwing, she's not a throw caution to the wind type of person. Not from what I know. So, um, well, it, it, it all stems because in my youth, I clearly threw caution to the wind and then I got my tongue stuck in the freezer. Which probably led to you not throwing caution to the wind anymore. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I'm just my trying to. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this, this thing. You guys always know I, I erase a lot and redraw and put stuff to the side. Um, we're getting close to the time, guys. Um, I've been on this for 11 hours, and uh, we've got 15 more minutes, right? So I started at 11.15. I said an hour and a half. That puts us at 12.30, which is what? Uh, 15 more minutes? Is that what that is? Yeah, 15. 15 yeah, more 15. minutes. So if you guys have any more questions for me, and if you find this at all helpful, um, please give us a line. Uh, let us know. I want to hear in the chat room that you guys are committed to signing up and checking us out this Monday, this, this next coming Monday for the draw over uh, part of the show. Um, I'm sorry, I just have to read this out. Um, Life Fantasy X said I stuck a coin in a wall socket when I was a kid, and then I never did it again. Like, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Life Fantasy X. <laughs> that is not, that is surprisingly not an uncommon thing for people to do. And as a matter of fact, we're on the subject of stupid things that kids do because of curiosity. Um well, my dog, for one, being a puppy, he likes to taste everything. Bodoff is like, I want to chew and eat everything. And I go, well, he's a dog. But kids are the same way. So there's an actual thing where, and we looked it up online because my friend was talking about it. And I was just like, no, that can't be. Um, kids actually, not to get go, have a, be a Debbie Downer, but kids actually swallow uh, the, the batteries and they'll chew on the little watch batteries, the little disc batteries. Those things are very powerful, and actually people have swallowed those kids and have chewed them, and when they break apart, they'll actually burn holes in your stomach or burn holes in your throat and have caused permanent damage to people. So, um, And I, I know kids that will stick forks. You know, As a kid, people will take metal objects and put it in. But t taking a quarter doesn't sound... Uh, I don't know how old you were when you did it, but, um, you know, my son, who was just online, he swallowed a quarter. He was doing a, a, a magic trick, and he was, he was eight, and, and Hunt or Shay was uh, six at the time. Or no, was it eight and ten? It, might, it was either six and eight or eight and ten. I'm trying to remember uh, which, what time. He, he basically what happened was, he was doing a magic trick, and he thought he would do a reappearing, disappearing trick. And when he did the trick, he would he would do this, and then he put the corner in his mouth, and then he would go, "See, no hands," and then smile, and the corner would be in his mouth. Well, he did it, and Hunter or Shay laughed, and then Jonathan laughed and swallowed the 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 quarter. And we didn't know this until he kept th he kept throwing up. We're like, "What's going on? What's going on?" He goes, "I swallowed a quarter," and we're like, "What?" So we rushed him to the hospital. And we have, his mom has an image, a perfect x-ray of Jonathan's throat. Now, we had to take him to the kid's emergency room, and then they, they, they took a little thing that came down and pulled the quarter out. But the quarter literally got stuck right here above his, or just below, or above his esophagus. 
but straight up and down like this. It wasn't like this to where it would block his windpipe. It was literally straight up and down like this stuck. And we have an, an x-ray of a quarter. You can see it as plain as view, you know, plain sight is like this quarter in his throat. And, you know, we laugh about it now, but that was pretty traumatic. But those are the, those are the things that we do as kids, right? We do these, these types of things. So, you know what, let's, let's take it up for the last 10 minutes. You know, it's funny to hear these stories if you guys have any of them. Um, oh, uh, Unprepared to Die says, and my brother did that same quarter swallowing thing my, himself too in elementary school. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Unprepared says, I knew a kid who died swallowing a watch toy battery. I am sorry to hear that and didn't mean to bring that up, but this is, those are harsh realities. The, the stupid, you know, we're, we're trying to talk about the funny, you know, you know, we got on the subject of the funny things that we did with, of course, Anita <laughs> sticking her tongue and actually waiting for the fridge to warm up so she could pull her tongue out. <laughs> you know, the trick is, is uh, putting warm water on it. That's all you had to do. Warm water. It just, it just seemed Warm, easier at the time. <laughs> um, um, Mary Beth said that she put a hairpin in the wall socket. Oh God. So I don't know. I don't know why you guys are like, I, I don't remember wanting to put stuff in, in sockets when I was a kid. Like I did some other dumb things, but it seems like it, Sticking things into electrical units seem to be the craze. Well, curiosity about electrical. Uh, I mean, I <laughs> I got electrocuted not too long ago uh, trying to fix uh, the wall because you know I'm doing home improvement stuff, so it's not uncommon. Um, I stuck the to see if it was hot or not. I thought it was I thought it was hot, but it, I hit the wrong circuit breaker and zzz, it vibrated my hand. So I was like, nope, that's that's definitely hot. It's a hot wire, so um, you kind of prepare for it when you know it's what what's about to come. And I've actually hit the 221 too, like where I'm reaching in and trying to plug something in. My finger just barely touched the metal, pushing it in because I had to reach in, and my whole arm just went <laughs> vibrate. Now a 220 outlet is a lot stronger than a regular electrical outlet when you're plugging in a uh, uh, a washer or a dryer. So, the things that we do, um, maybe he's about to do something. I, I know, I just keep thinking funny expressions, but I'm, I'm trying to, he's literally wearing a hat. The one character's wearing a hat. Like, she could probably pick him because, oh, I like him. And it says, you know, the whole party animal hat concept. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? Um, uh, Brush Mechanic said, uh, my brother was trimming branches on the Christmas tree and cut the lights instead. He felt that one. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Well, yeah, I'm laughing. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's pretty funny. That is, that's, that's pretty, I mean, you think about it, like all of the, like, there's a reason why, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is what it is. You know, he, you know, Chevy Chase's character is just a calamity of errors. You know, he's he's constantly making these, these stupid mistakes that really are based on truths that people have done. Um, you ever read the Darwin Awards that they used to post every? I think they still post them. Uh, and and of course, it's not. It's we're you know we're laughing at other people's uh, horrible tragedies. But there are some things where the the Darwin Awards was basically peop, uh, the weirdest things people die from um, or have accidents from, uh, not necessarily die, but like the stupid things that humans do um, without thinking. Um, because, you know, we are humans and we sometimes don't think a lot. <laughs> and then we have mistakes. Um I'm really trying to figure out what to to have in terms of his expression. I feel like he needs, I felt like he needed to be squinting.
that's what I wanted him to do, is do this kind of a squint kind of vibe. So again, if you guys are just tuning in, we are discussing story and character and how it relates to arc. And we're simply, right now I've been trying to uh, focus on the baboons right now, on what they would look like frozen. And I'm not doing a very good job. I feel like uh, when I when that are happens, they, are they, are you, you, is your intention that they are frozen separately? Yeah, they're uh, they're. Could they be frozen together? Um, share like one expression or one action that they're frozen in. Is that your idea? Yeah, that's 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 me. Just learning. That's and actually yeah, not okay. a that's actually not a bad idea. So if if they were um, if they were maybe. Let's see here. Again, I'm going to do a quick gesture. I'm going to throw this up here. All right. Maybe. Uh, maybe one is trying to grab. at the other, uh, the banana. Look at you draw so fast. Well, I'm trying to do a gesture of what, what, what this thing would look like if they were stuck. It, actually, that would make for a funny gag I, concept where, um, put this down here real quick, insert. That actually would be pretty funny that they go, oh, these guys look harmless enough. And then they go to hint them, and then they unfreeze them, and they're in the middle of fighting for the, the banana, and they pop up, and they're like, hey, what's this place? And then they go into, their, into the dialogue of the script. That actually would be pretty yeah. funny. I like that idea. I me likes that. Yeah, that's wow. You're kind of you're kind of brilliant. Oh, I know. It's just so hard to to be you. So good at so good. Yeah. yeah, it's so hard to be you. I get it. I understand. Not everyone can be as uh, perfect and as uh, creatively talented and as you. And um, beautiful yeah. and talented and and uh, uh, smart all of, all of all of those yeah. those things that you that make up the perfection that is known as Anita Womano uh, yes yes I get it I understand <laughs> I understand uh, so so I'm taking that gesture and I'm now just putting my it's speed drawing time by Travis Blaze. It's like, how fast can we? But you do it so well. Um, actually, I was, I've been like um, telling my friends, like, because, you know, when you're a student, you tend to, you know, draw slow because you're concerned about what things look like. You, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to make the cleanest rough drawing out there. Yeah. But I, I keep telling my friends, like, if you saw how quickly Travis makes one drawing, you'd realize, like, it doesn't matter. Just go for it because 
at the end of the day, you're like making a bigger picture, not just this one singular image. No, and that's and that is that is a very very keen observation is that we're not. You're, you're not making one singular image. I mean, this thing has to get animated, right? So we're talking about 24 frames per second. So, um, and then you're storyboarding it. So you, you've got, you've got, yeah, you just got to commit and get out there and just do it and not worry about um, how pretty the drawing looks. That's for sure. Um, so we got that. Uh, other tail uh, yeah and we're getting close to the hour it's 1245 so I'm gonna give myself uh, just enough to finish this piece of art or this quick sketch and then we're gonna call it a day because I got to get back to my job I'm actually really excited about what I'm doing and I'm, and I'm hoping that um, the work that I'm doing, the, the boards that I'm developing right now, my first pass uh, will go over well with the director. But we shall see. Um, it's always, it, uh, you know, it's always the first, I always get those first scene jitters or sequence jitters where it's like the first time working with a new director and I, I'm not sure what their sensibilities are, or what they're going to like and not like. And then I, I get nervous, you know, I get nervous about... If, if I can ask, is your director like familiar with animated films, like the process of animated oh, films? Oh, yeah, there's, they there, like there's, there's, yeah, no, they're story artists. They come from a story, uh, story oh, background. I've seen, seen their work. Um, they're, they're good. They're good at what they do. So, and, you know, every, you know, just, just know that any, any director that's out there that's at Netflix is, is very, in a very deserving position to be in. Um, you know, they, I, I think they do a great job in vetting uh, uh, directors and creators uh, for the, these productions. Just looking at their caliber of talent, from Craig McCallan, Craig McCracken to Jorge to to uh, um, uh, 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 Alex Hirsch and all these other artists that are creators over there. Um, uh, got, Pendleton Ward. Is yeah, also Pendleton Ward extent. is over there. Yep. Um, they've got a they got a great great uh, group of talented artists. Uh, Ian Bombato, who's a phenomenal story artist, is over there on a production. Um, I just found out my buddy John Hurst, who has been freelancing, he was with Blue Sky for years, did a lot of the Ice Age uh, uh, shows, um, is now a, a freelance, uh, he's full-time freelance like I am, um, with, um, I wouldn't say we're freelance, I'd say we're full-time but we're remote artists. We're non-union artists, if you will. Uh, so, sorry, I'm trying to get his hand in there. He's grabbing at the banana. This one needs to say party animal. It's getting quiet. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was replying to someone uh, in, on, on the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, anything I should know about? Oh, Unprepared to Die uh, said that they... They microwaved a Twix bar with the metal wrapper on it one time and saw electricity coiling around it like a SFX of an old sci-fi film. I oh, opened God. it right away and the metal wrapper was shredded. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's just showing you the power of microwaves and what you can do with technology, right? This, yeah, it's like... I, I've, I've also had my moment with the microwave um, that I learned. I don't have a yeah. microwave, um, and that's for that singular purpose. I don't really care for microwaves, honestly, and uh, it's it's kind of funny that um, everyone has you know these shared experiences. I've seen uh, 
my friend put a cockroach in a microwave and see what it does to it. Uh, it's no. not. No. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. I, I am not an advocate for killing anything. I literally don't like to kill anything, which you probably already know. But I watched witness a cockroach in Florida, which are very uh, pesky little buggers. Uh, my friend throw uh, a, a cockroach into the microwave and I'm like no man what are you doing and he's like and he sits there and he watches it and it totally exploded inside of it it was very disturbingly disgusting yeah so there you go um, so brush mechanic um, sent something over and they said sorry sorry curious about what to submit I've had a spin-off idea that's two minutes long, slowly to improve my process. Is this a slippery slope, fitting a character into existing property? Uh, I have an original idea, too. Um, what I, I, you know, Mandy submitted something that was pretty long. Uh, not Mandy, there's another artist that submitted something that was, like, really long. And I would say if you submit, I don't know if you're saying like what to submit, but if you submit something, try to keep it very simple uh, or the concept, narrow it down to something that I can do, maybe do a draw over that can help elevate your story idea for the bigger idea. Um, keep it, try to keep it to like, you know, uh, 10 seconds or under for animation. Um, give, give it a, a series of panels, of boards that you might have that, have, that kind of illustrate a thought or an idea and even if I can't get to it if I can at least start you on the right path uh, in terms of suggestions that would be a great uh, way to kind of minimize the amount of work that I you know because I have to say that the like Manny submitted a test that was really long and there's a lot in there but hopefully um, I did enough in there and created enough information for them to kind of run with um, Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing done before I have to get off the... I don't like what I did here. This this head is killing me for some reason. Um. Um, and then uh, Filippo Machi asks if you've seen the trailer of Over the Moon, um, the net the next Netflix animation movie. I, I have seen it. Actually, as a matter of fact, they just posted it on our, our, our news feed for Netflix. So yes, I have seen it. It looks, it looks great. It looks really nice. I'm, I'm excited to see, um, see that project. Um, there's going to be a lot of diverse uh, projects coming out there. The project that I'm working on is, is, is more on, a, on the adult side. Uh, so it's going to have a different... Um, range and a different uh, public or a different demographic of people that are going to be watching it. It's not going to be fam uh, family friendly per se, uh, although, you know, young teens or uh, older teens would probably watch it. Um, but it's, it's definitely uh, on the, the adult side of, of productions that they have over there. So they have different departments uh, for, for different various streamings. So there you go. I've got, I've got, uh, uh, there. All right. I can, I can, I can settle with this one. I think this one works. It's, it's, it, you know, I like, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep flushing this idea out more, but I think, um, I do like this idea, Anita, what you suggested, which is uh, essentially these two are frozen together. Um, and it actually would make it for an interesting, kind of a fun gag moment um, where you have all these different characters and all of a sudden you show these two guys. It's like, oh, you know, two, two for the price of one, we get two. You know, maybe they can make a, a joke like that. Uh, we get two for the price of yeah. one. Um, but yeah. uh, I, I like what you have, like, the idea... Um, with them like fighting or entangled completely and they look kind of silly but like bros like two bros fighting over something well they're fighting over banana which I think um, would be kind of kind of funny this is a great idea Anita I like this thank you 
you have good ideas. My dad always, right, that's so what my dad says, ideas. Ideas? Ideas, like a deer. Like, I got one idea. A one eye, you mean, what do you mean a one idea? Is it a deer with one eye? And I would always make oh. that silly little joke to my dad. I got two ideas. And then he'd follow up with two ideas. I don't know. My dad's a silly. My dad's a silly guy. He's in Vermont right now for the next couple of months before he comes back to Florida to hang with my, my bro, my bra, my, my real bra. I know that sounded cheesy. Bra. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I, I can let that go. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm just going to uh, finish this off with coloring the hands and feet. How do you guys like this drawing? Let me know. I actually like it. I think this is a good one. I'll let you know once they let me know. Uh, no one's let you know yet? Everyone's okay. so everyone's so it's quiet. Okay. I, think, I think it takes a while for it to get to them because I notice like you'll be talking about something and maybe five minutes later everyone else is like, Oh yeah, that thing, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, there yeah. must be a huge delay. Uh yeah, I don't know how big of a delay. It's probably like thirty seconds or so, maybe. From what it sounds like some of the reactions of people. Um because okay, the, the chat... So now people, people are reacting now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Brush Mechanic says, This is great, cool transition between scenes two. The idea is a cool transition between scenes two. And Lucretia says, Yeah. And Mary Beth is like, I like it. The drawing. So yeah, people like it. All right. Like the idea. The, yeah. this, this is how we're going to end the show with this, with this particular piece which I'm pretty happy with overall I'm gonna make sure that I, I get and I'll um, I might put this in all right this will be again we're still doing the the uh, the patreon so I've got to uh, put together another now we're doing one um, is that how we're doing we're doing one a month uh, of the uh, yeah. of the PDFs yeah, one a month. So um, we, we have one for this month, so it'll be for next month. This so will be for next about month. A week or two. Got it. Yeah. And I'm still still shy on the uh, the tutorial one, which um, I have been struggling to get out, just because of my time. Um, mm. That I've been I've been. Have you shot it? Um, yes. Um, okay. Am I ready to go with it? No. Not yet. And the one I'm trying to get out is the dialogue one with that I did a while back. Um, I wanted to, oh, I did the wrong hand. I wanted to do, because um, this one, remember, he's lighter. He's a lighter character. I wanted have you to, started editing the dialogue one? Or no. if you have just the footage, I can, I can edit it. No, I have not me. even... I have not even attempted to, to edit anything on it yet. Uh, okay. Just because send I've been... It my, send it my way. Okay, I'll send it your way. That sounds good. Sounds like an, a reasonable plan. I, I, can, yes. I can buy off on that one. Um, so so Duroc, or Duroc is light, a white-ish uh, lighter character than his buddy Derek, who is... Derek is actually taller. Uh, yeah, there we go. I got to do this one, make sure that. There we go. All right. I think Cook we says maybe when they unfreeze, they uh, are still arguing about the banana. Oh yeah, no. This the, I think the the funny would be that these guys, I already got a scenario in my head. Is like they they get we get two for the price of one, and then they um, they unfree when they unfreeze them. They're they're rolling around already, and then you stop, 
and they they stand up and they and they go into character, basically checking out the room. Like now they're they're, they're into inquisitive mode, um, and they can immediately break maybe the machine that's in front of uh, Bo and Sue that they're in front of the console um, that unfreezes them, and maybe they break it and um, and it kind of starts starts the trend from there. All right. I, All right. So it's, I, I think twelve. Yeah. So we're yeah. I went over what I should should have gone. So we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it on this one. Um, I actually like this 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 drawing a lot in terms of the the idea, the pose. Um, let's get rid of. Let's get rid of. That and what I'll do is I can take this image and then I can put it inside one of the tubes, and then we'll we'll call it we'll call it a day from there. Um, yeah, but I like this. I think it's I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Um, his arm actually would honestly his arm uh, Duroc's arm would probably be here somewhere if I have it right there. Then I can. I just want to throw in a piece of his arm, and then go. Hey, I see you guys Monday. Yeah. Everyone so there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch it back to uh, Big Travis here again. Or actually, we're gonna go over to uh, the other camera, and again. Um, Transition, where, uh, where are we? Transition. I've got so much stuff in front of me. Transition. All right, guys, I'm a little white washed out, so I apologize. But again, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And then um, look at our Patreon. We, uh, we have uh, three different tiers going on. And then when you get a chance, uh, tell your friends, family, neighbors, anyone that's interested in animation that want to learn about animation, uh, so go down and click below and subscribe to sketchanimate.com. And uh, let's switch back over to this. And if you want, uh, check us out this coming Monday from 6 to 9.30. And I will be doing a uh, draw, we're calling them Draw Over Mondays. Uh, Sketch Animate presents Draw Over Mondays, where I will be going over various artists' work. And uh, we need as many patron, or sorry, as many Twitch uh, subscribers as possible to come on board and watch us during that time. It is Pacific Standard Time, so just check out your schedule, um, what it is. So it might be late at night for you guys. It might be first thing in the morning. Um, right now, because of where we're at, I might take the first one that we did and post it to YouTube so you can kind of check out what I did. Um, and then you can, again, go to uh, Monday nights on Twitch. If you don't have a Twitch account, go ahead and, and sign up. I think Wink told me that if, you first, if you're a first-time Twitch person, you may not have chatting capabilities, but you can watch or observe. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, at any rate, go ahead, check us out. And um, I'm also doing an original piece of art during that live stream where I will give one original piece of art away. I will draw it digitally. I will print it, and then I will delete the digital image, and I will sign and say one of one, and it'll be one of a kind, and I will post it in a little envelope. It'll be a four by six image, and it will be black and white, and I will send it off to whoever wants to win that. So there you have it. Um, Anita, am I missing anything? Um, I'm just, oh, well, I was typing this out, but I, I'll just respond to uh, Brush Mechanic because okay. I asked uh, when we submit our work. For Monday stream, for this this coming Monday stream, just have your work uh, ready to share, like via like um, you know Google Drive or something, um, because Wink, who is the moderator for the Twitch stream, he's he'll he'll be able to help you with that. Um, so yeah, just have have it have some have it ready for Monday, and then we'll have a more like fleshed out formal process um, in the coming weeks. Sounds great. Sounds awesome. Well, that being said, guys, I've got to go. I got work to do. I know you guys are doing various things. Uh, it's great to see everyone. Mary Beth, Fant Life Fantasy X, Alice, Marahashi, uh, Brush Mechanic, thank you for being on here. MB Bellin. We've got um, Lucretio. We've got, who else we got? We got 
Flip, uh, Filippo, and Luc uh, let's see, Life Fantasy has uh, D Dem Demitar and Alice and Unprepared to Die. All of these great people are on here today. This is awesome. Um, am I missing anybody? Of course, Joe Scott was on earlier who uh, gave some great advice. Um, and then there's Drewby. So we got all we got all the familiar names, and of course my 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 partner in crime there, Jazz, now had to put his two cents worth in there. And then we have Ben who was on early. I don't know if Ben was still on in Gobo. Man, we've got and Kitcha Cat and Chen's Art and uh, Kel Shakes. Wow, we we had so many That's awesome it. new people. What's that? Kel Shakes. I'm Kel Shakes. Oh, you're I'm, Ke I'm Kel Shakes. Oh, you're Kel Shakes. I didn't even know that. I'm Man, Kel Shakes. you have so many different. Mustache and Kel shakes and I know I I, I try to Marahashi yeah. Well, with that being said, guys, have a great week. Uh, rest of your week. Be safe. Do something kind for others. Uh, we need more positivity in this world. Um, you know, everyone deserves a voice. Everyone needs a fair shake. So um, get out there. Do some something fun and creative. Keep yourself distance, socially distance. So we're still we're still not out of the woods with this coronavirus. Um, and uh, until then, I'll see you guys hopefully Monday evening, but I will be back again next Wednesday around the same time. So have a great one. We'll talk to you later. I'm going to transition. Here we go. Oh, I do it every time. I got to click this. I'll see you guys later.